All right, so here in this video, I'll be showing you how to download, install, and do the initial setup for Mod Organizer 2 to get you up and running with mods. Of course, be sure that you have at least one of these supported games of Mod Organizer 2 installed on your PC. That way, Mod Organizer 2 will be able to detect that game while we're going through the initial installation and setup process. So to get started, go to the Nexus Mods page for Mod Organizer 2, which will be linked down in the description below. And once here, you'll want to head down and go to the Files tab, and here you will see the main file for Mod Organizer 2. All you have to do is simply click Manual Download, and it will prompt you to then download it. If it does not automatically start the download or ask you if you want to save as, you might need to click Download once again. And if your browser asks you whether you want to open or save as, be sure to click Save As, and it will then ask you where you want to save the setup executable. Be sure to just select your Downloads folder and click Save. Once it has been downloaded, you can go ahead and open up your Downloads folder. And from here, we can see the setup executable. All you have to do in order to install Mod Organizer 2 is simply double click on the installer, and that will then give you a UAC prompt, which is required in order to install it. So be sure to click yes. And from here, you want to click accept agreement. If you want to read through this, feel free, click next. And here is where things get a little tricky. By default, it will put it on your local drive in modding slash MO2. You'll wanna keep this default setting to modding MO2 on your local disk if you're going to be installing your mods on your local disk. If you're wanting to install your mods on a nether drive, say for example, you have a game drive, that's when you wanna change it. Otherwise, keep it default. Now I do have a game drive, so I would click browse and find my drive. We can go ahead and minimize the local disk, go to my game library drive, and within here, I then want to create a brand new folder. So I'll create a new modding folder. And within the modding folder, I will create a MO2 folder. And from there, click OK. That will now send Mod Organizer 2 to my games drive in a modding folder. And then within the modding folder will be the MO2 folder, which is where the MO2 installation will be. So from here, we can go ahead and click Next. And you can see that the component selection will now be automatically put on recommended install. If we scroll down, you can see that everything is checked off by default. You want to ensure that it is on recommended install. Do not change it to anything else. So go ahead and click Next. And here it will then ask you if you want to create a start menu folder. By default, it will create a start menu folder called Mod Organizer. You can also choose not to create a start menu folder. Either way, just go ahead and click Next. You will then be asked if you want to create a desktop shortcut. I suggest doing so, so be sure to check that box and then click Next. And now it is ready to install. You'll see that the destination location is shown here, the start menu folder, as well as the additional tasks, which is create a desktop shortcut. So if all looks good, you can now click Install. It will then go through the installation process for Mod Organizer 2, which will take a few moments. When it's completed, you'll get the option to launch Mod Organizer. Be sure to do so and click Finish. You will now get the initial setup for Mod Organizer 2, which will begin with creating a new instance, which an instance is the full set of mods, downloads, profiles, and configurations for a game. So we can go ahead and click Next, and you'll get the option to either create a global instance or a portable instance. Now, I highly suggest installing a global instance, as if you use a portable instance, there are a few occasions where mods will not work well with it, and you will also be required to reinstall Mod Organizer 2 for each and every game. If you use a global instance, it will work like other mod managers, and you'll be able to switch between instances for other games. So I highly suggest clicking Create a Global Instance, and then it will ask you which game you would like to manage. Now for this video, I will be choosing Follow 3. Go ahead and choose whatever game you're gonna be installing mods for. You can create more instances later on. Just choose whichever game you wanna start with. I will be selecting Follow 3 for this video, but the setup is the same for all games. Of course, just with a different game title. And if your game doesn't show up, just click Browse and find the folder that contains the game. So for me, that would be Game Library, Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common, and find whatever game you're wanting to mod. Please keep in mind that Mod Organizer 2 only supports specific games, so you'll wanna make sure that the game is supported before adding it. So since we're gonna be doing Follow 3, we can just select Follow 3 from here, and for some games, it will ask you which game edition you have. For Follow 3, there is the regular edition and the Game of the Year edition. I have the Game of the Year edition, so that's what I would select, and I'll just set it as Follow 3 for the custom name. Click Next. It will then ask you to select a folder for where the data should be stored. So by default, this is set to your app data folder. If earlier in the video, you decided to keep Mod Organizer installed on your local disk and you plan on installing your mods on your local disk, you can keep this 
as default. But if you want all your mods stored on a game drive, for example, like we did earlier, you want to go ahead and click show advanced options. This will show you that downloads, mods, profiles, and overwrites will all be located wherever the base directory is. So if we go ahead and click the ellipsis icon next to base directory, it will then ask us where we want our base directory to be. What I suggest doing is going into the modding folder that you created for Mod Organizer 2. And within the modding folder, I want to create a new folder for the instance I'm creating, which in this case is follow three. So I would right click, go to new, folder, name it whatever you want. Just make sure that you know that it's a Mod Organizer 2 instance and make sure you know which game that instance is for. So I'll name mine mo 2 follow 3 hit enter, and make sure that the folder is highlighted that you want to select and click select folder. This will then show you the base directory that you have set, which mine is on my game drive in modding and then in the new mo 2 follow 3 folder, which means that my downloads, mods, profiles, and overwrite will all be located in the mo 2 follow 3 folder. So once you have everything set up as you'd like, go ahead and click next. And here you'll see that it wants you to link your mod organizer with your Nexus account. So in order to do so, we can go ahead and just click the connect to Nexus button, and this will automatically open up a window for Nexus mods, asking whether or not you want to authorize Mod Organizer 2 getting access to your Nexus mods account. Go ahead and click authorize, and now you've successfully logged into Mod Organizer 2 using Nexus mods. We can go ahead and minimize this window, and as you can see, it has linked with Nexus successfully. So once that has been done successfully, you can go ahead and click next. And here it will give you a confirmation of everything you have done up until this point. And if everything looks good, go ahead and click finish. Now on the initial launch of Mod Organizer 2, after you've done the installation, you will be asked if you want to show the tutorial. However, I suggest just clicking never asked to show tutorials and click no. You will then likely get a register pop up letting you know that Mod Organizer is not set up to handle NXM links and asking you whether you want to associate it with NXM links. What NXM links are for is it allows you to use the download with manager button on Nexus mods. So I highly suggest clicking yes here. That will make it so that whenever you click download with manager on the follow three Nexus, for example, it will then automatically send it to your downloads on Mod Organizer 2 itself. So now that you have Mod Organizer 2 installed and set up, what you want to do is ensure that it's working correctly. So you can do so by clicking on the globe icon, which will allow you to browse the mod page for Nexus. Go ahead and click visit on Nexus and this will open up a tab to Nexus mods for follow three. Go ahead and find any mod that you want to install as long as it has a download with manager option. So for example, let's do the Gauss rifle retexture that just recently released and scroll down to the files tab and you should see a mod manager download button. Go ahead and click it and you may get a prompt letting you know that this site is trying to open an NXM link proxy. So what you want to do is ensure that you check the box that says always allow Nexus mods to open links of this type in the associated app. This will make it so that you don't have to go through this prompt each and every time you try to download a mod from Nexus. So check that box and click open. That will then automatically start the download on Mod Organizer 2. So we can go ahead and head back to Mod Organizer 2, go to the Downloads tab, and as you can see, we have the D7 Ghost Rifle retexture here, and its status is downloaded. Now, if you're wanting to install mods for another game through Mod Organizer 2, all you would do is click the icon at the top left. As you see here, it will say open the instance manager window to manage a different instance. Click that and you will now be able to create a new instance and go through the same process that we did earlier in the video. And that's it. Mod Organizer 2 is now installed and set up correctly. You're free to install mods for your games. I'll of course have more tutorials on Mod Organizer 2, how to use specific features, some of the more advanced functionalities of Mod Organizer 2. But until then, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please smack that like button down below, subscribe during the fight if you don't already, and ring that bell icon to stay updated in all of my future videos. Be super greatly appreciated as always. And until next time, this is Epoxy signing off.